The topic for this video is vocabulary words. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the words solve, solutions, roots, x-intercept, and coordinates. So, if you see a question where they're asking you to solve for x, here the word solve, what they're asking you to do is to get the x by itself. So, if the question says solve for x in y equals 3x minus 12, it means get the x by itself in that equation. Okay, so if you have this uh, to get the x by itself, uh, first thing I did is I added 12 to both sides of the equal sign. So 3x minus 12 plus 12 just becomes 3x. This side of the equal sign y plus 12 is y plus 12. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of the equal sign by 3. And when you're dividing, you are uh, you divide each of the terms. So 3x divided by 3 becomes x. 12 divided by 3 is 4. y divided by 3 is y divided by 3. So here I have now solved for x because I have gotten the x by itself. The x is by itself on one side of the equal sign. Let's compare that to, if you see this, find the solutions of. Finding the solutions, here the word solutions means all the values that make an equation true. So, if I had find the solutions of 8 minus the square root of x plus 3. This has one solution. This has one solution, which is x equals 25. If you want me to do the math, uh, to find the value for x that makes this true, first thing I'm going to do is add, uh, subtract 3 to both sides of the equal sign. So this uh, square root of 3, square root of x plus 3 minus 3 just becomes square root of x. 8 minus 3 is 5. To get the x out of the square root, I'm going to square both sides. So uh, square root of x squared becomes x. 5 squared becomes 25. So you have your answer x equals 25. So this has one solution right here. Now let's say you are asked instead to find the solutions of this y equals square root of x plus 3. Once again here solutions are anything the values that make that equation true. Now this here with two variables has an infinite number of solutions. If x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 3. x equals 0, y equals 3 is one solution. x equals 1, y equals 4, another solution. x equals 2, uh, if I change the x into 2, then y is equal to square root of 2 plus 3. If x is 0 0.25 or 1 quarter, y is equal to 3.5. So this, when you have two variables and ask you to find solutions, there are an infinite number of solutions. If you have only one variable and they ask you to find the solutions, there's only one solution, there's only one value that makes that equation true uh, in this particular case. All right. Let's move on to the word roots. I'm personally not a big fan of this word because it has sort of uh, I've seen it used in two different ways with two sort of different definitions. One definition when they ask you to find the root of an equation is they are asking you to find the values that make the y equal to zero. So this would be more than one variable and they're asking you if you change the y into zero then what values for the other variable would make that true. The other definition I've seen is when they ask you to find the roots is they're just asking you to find the values that make an equation true. 
Uh, this definition usually I've noticed is used when there's only one variable in the equation. So let's give any example of this first definition of roots. So if you're asked, find the roots of y equal 3x minus 12. Here, since there are two variables, y and x, uh, I if I read this, I would assume they're talking about definition 1, which is what, var what values make the y equal to 0. So to solve this, or to find the roots, I would change the y into 0, and then I would solve. So plus 12 to both sides gets me 12 equals 3x. Divide each side by 3, and I have x equals 4. x equals 4 is the root of y equals 3x minus 12. Let's look at an example with this second definition. If I was asked to find the roots of x equals square root of x plus 3. So here I only see one variable and I am, when I read this, I am assuming you're talking about this definition too. Just what values make that equation true? So uh, I would subtract 3 from both sides, get 5 is equal to square root of x. Square both sides, I get x equals 25. x equals 25 is the root for this equation right here. Uh, one thing I want to quickly point out is if you see something like this written where you have this parentheses s, uh, in English the s added to the end usually means plural or more than one. Here the reason they have it in parentheses is they're not telling you if there's only one root or if there's more than one root. So uh, you might read this as find the root or roots of this equation. So they're not telling you how many roots there are, they're saying just go find them. All right, because of this uh, two definitions, I'm personally not a big fan of using this uh, vocab word, but it gets used. Okay. Next, let's talk about x-intercepts, x-intercepts. So an x-intercept is where the graph of that equation crosses the x-axis. So the uh, we're generally here talking about an x-y-axis. The y-axis is the one that goes up and down. The x-axis is the one that goes left to right, or right to left, the horizontal one. So when they ask you for the x-intercepts of an equation, they're asking you where does that, where does the graph of that equation go through the x-axis? All right. So uh, one thing to note is that every point on the x-axis, y is equal to zero. So for example, this point right here, this is uh, x equal negative seven, y equals zero. This point over here is x equal uh, positive eight, y equal zero. So everywhere on the x-axis, y is equal to zero. So if they're asking you to find the y-intercepts of this, First thing I would do is I would change the y into 0. And then use one of the many different ways that you have learned how to solve for x, uh, to solve for x. So here I have solved uh, for x here. And my when I solve for x, I get x equals 3 over 2, or 1.5 or x equals negative 4 over 3. So those two are my x-intercepts. So solution, solution, or sorry, x-intercept, x-intercept. And let's graph this real quick. So y equals 2x minus 3, 
3x plus 4. Yep, okay. So if I were to graph this, you would see that it does indeed cross the x-axis at 3 over 2, which is 1.5, and it crosses it at uh, negative 4 over 3. Negative 4 over 3 is about um, negative 1.3333333 repeating, so right here. All right, so to continue, um, because x-intercepts are talking about where the graph crosses the x-axis, uh, and this is usually done on xy coordinate plane, uh, this right here is an xy coordinate plane, uh, there are no imaginary x-intercepts. So when you solve for x here, after you change the y to zero, if you solve for x and your x's are imaginary, then there are no x-intercepts. For example, if I have this equation right here, y equals 4x squared minus 16x plus 19. The graph of that looks like this. If you notice, it, uh, the graph uh, from left to right, the graph goes down, and the lowest point is right here, uh, 2 comma 3, and then goes back up. And it keeps on going up forever, but this is as far down as it goes. Therefore, uh, since right here, 2 comma 3 is as far down as it goes, this never, this, the graph of this never crosses the x-axis. So this has no x-intercepts. It does have two imaginary solutions, but it has no x-intercepts. To continue, uh, let's say you're asked a slightly different question. You're asked for the coordinates of something. Coordinates here means the address of a point or basically the parentheses x comma y. So if you're asked to determine the x-intercepts, the coordinates of the x-intercepts for this, well, we already know x-intercepts means change the y to 0. You change the y for 0, solve for x, and you have x equal 3 over 2 and x equal negative 4 over 3. But since they're asking you for the coordinates, the correct answer is parentheses 3 over 2 comma 0 and parentheses negative 4 over 3 comma 0 because they're asking you for the x comma y, the coordinates. So that's just a slightly different wording than this question right here. So therefore it has a slightly different response. Here, when they ask you for the x-intercepts, uh, it is generally understood that y is equal to 0. So you just have to say the x value, because that's the value that people don't automatically know. The only reason here we end up putting the y value is because they specifically asked you for the x, uh, for the coordinates.